finance management is essentially required for everyone irrespective of the field they are in effectively managing our own finances itself is not that simple did you ever wonder on how the finances are managed at the high level in a corporate environment well let's try to understand that in our episode today hello listeners this is giridhar and you are listening to the podcast giridhar's gardi today we have someone along with me who is intelligent humorous talkative and little naughty by nature a born actor who can impress you in just a fraction of seconds not only with his acting but also with his dialogue delivery also a travel buff by choice he is welcoming the guest of our today's episode ashashwi hi ashashwi welcome to giridhar's gardi how are you doing today I am doing great, Giridhar. After giving a lot of uh, introduction, I feel overwhelmed being in on your show. Thank you, thank you so much. I think you are trying to answer my next question. How do you feel like being here on this podcast? <laughs> It's amazing, Giridhar. The way we started and today sitting down here virtually, still doing this podcast. It's amazing, and keep going. Work is doing great. Thank you. thank you thank you so much all right so ashashwi give us a glimpse of what is this corporate finance management all about uh corporate finance management is something like in every individual's life finances it's a regular term you use and coming back to for an individual uh, still we for suppose considering me managing my salary is a very difficult thing and in the corporate having such a big organization managing this finance how the revenue is pulled up and how the each expenditure you spend on a employee how that is managed and against all this you have another factors to manage like an employee to run his every day to day work you need to have a laptop you need to have its own monitor and you need to have his desk so there are a lot of things comes into the picture so considering each has one attribute there is couple of factors which probably i'll explain you in detail on going but all these factors come together and how a corporate is dealing how an individual spending or on an employee is dealt is all together a corporate finance management oh sounds interesting so how did you acquire the knowledge on corporate finance management uh, that's a strange story uh, i was i was a i was a computer science student but uh, somehow the other way i always go crazy with numbers i always wanted to learn on finance but i never got a chance but two years back uh, after leaving my first like i used to work in synopsis and then i step back or step out of synopsis again came back as a finance uh, like a data analyst or a data scientist that's where i start learning on corporate finance i started working on the p&ls of our company uh, from the scratch so at that point of time i started learning on the corporate finance so as mentioned in the previous question i'll tell you a simple scenario what a corporate finance from my learning if you have a product p considering in your at your home if you have a a normal a mat considering which is you spent on it 100 rupees and you are using it for a day or like two years down the line that is what uh, how did like you spent 100 rupees and you have used it for a two years down the line coming in terminology with the corporate finance the spending is nothing but the amount of cost that is spent on an employee and the, the two years down the line that you have used whatever you have used that's nothing but the revenue that is generated from the employee and on this employee you keep using uh the the table you have bought or anything from the employee point of view you have you have given him a facility to sit in a chair and a desk and in in additional you have given him an it expense which is nothing but a laptop or a monitor etc and to manage all this you have an other other specific things like finance you have an it again comes in you have a facilities you have different groups comes into the picture this is all nothing but a corporate finance management which 
in a simple terminology every person in day to day life whatever the finance management they do it is simply replicated in the corporate with the larger scale this is what my learning and this is what i have acquired till today wow that's amazing ashashwi you have just given a small simple example with which even a layman can understand about uh, the corporate finance on a large scale all right Thanks, so yeah uh, so usually how many member strength does this corporate finance team uh, a typical corporate finance team can oh. constitute this depends on each individual firms considering my firm it's a, it's a very big large scale so large scale industry it has a very huge across the globe but uh, generally each corporate finance is not all alone the pnl like uh, so coming coming back to the again on the corporate fi- finance point of view so if i say revenue or if i say expense or if i say anything with respect to another terminology like expenses are thing but i state the employee cost so we have a 20000 or 10 more than 10 15000 employees so you can't everyone can sit down and write it on a paper okay this person this person is working how much time and all similarly when it comes to revenue each cost like for suppose if there is a small license that is considered you can't so it's it's a very large team again uh, coming back to a ratio point of view if it is a 15000 there could be a team of probably 200 to 250 so something like uh, you can you can go with that ratio that's how it is general corporate like i i'm taking a, a couple of car uh, i'm ta- talking about the it industry as such but it de- depends on different different industries you could have a very a lesser point of view or greater point of view like coming to an investment banking you might have a larger scale of uh, a finance management team because you have a lot of lot of different point of view clients not all alone on the individual corporate finance okay okay so uh, ashashwi uh, tell me what are the formal financial procedures being followed when signing a contract with a customer in a corporate environment uh coming back to this question uh, on the car contract it's it depends on individual policies from company to company but i can i can explain here how the contract is been reflected in the corporate finance like for suppose if if you say if uh, an example uh, i'll tell you uh, a, every day a paper like in the morning there is a paper that comes to your home yeah okay so for suppose if, uh, you you been work like you been uh, subscribed to that person for 3 years down the line do you think you pay all 3 years of your uh, expenditure on the paper at a stretch i don't think so you give yeah. him the bill every month right correct correct so similarly any contract with respect to the clients although they can they make a 3 year license or 1 year license or any point of view like they sign a contract for 3 years like for suppose 3 years i am using your product that's that's how the contract says but that doesn't mean all the 3 years revenue or all the 3 years revenue generated by that contract is not posted in corporate finance it comes out to be a quarterly based or monthly based like for suppose if it each license cost somewhere around 10 dollars uh, for 3 years that doesn't mean that you just don't post 10 dollars at this stage it gets it gets distributed accordingly based on the time scale so that is how the the contract has been signed this is this depends on the company to company again there could be a different policy like they can only sign a 3 year contract or this you don't like sign a 1 year contract that depends on the uh, the the handshake that the customer and the client have. okay okay maybe i uh, we can even relate this to any mobile uh, sim that exactly. we are using exactly yeah. any Mate mobile you use the, the way it is you spend on the mobile that doesn't mean that uh, you spend the initial phase but still it has its own lifetime it could be 3 years or 2 years so that is how you calculate the all together whether you have 
you if you spend a fifty thousand on a mobile and uh, you don't use it for more than a year, then that means it's it's a it's a loss again. But if you buy a twenty thousand mobile and use it for four years, it could be a profit, something like that. So it's a similar analogy I'm telling you. Oh, wow, that's great. That's great, Ashwini. Um, so, what are the fi- how are the finances managed in a corporate with respect to the employees' payroll? Um, employee payroll again. Uh, so, employee payroll is nothing but the amount of uh, direct expense on uh, in the corporate point of view. Like, if if an X amount is paid for me by the company, that is a directly they are spending X amount on me. so that is how the employee employee payroll is reflected in the corporate so for suppose if uh, an example if i am working on three different like our, uh, a corporate has some 20 products uh, and there is an x amount is paid for to me per month or per uh, year considering and i work on three different products so my payroll in the corporate finance it is reflected such a way that and i am working equally like probably three products 1 2 3 and in these three products you are the whole uh, my work or the distribution of work is divided such a way that 50 30 20 so my employee payroll is distributed such a way that at this x amount is distributed considering x as 100 then my whole salary contributing to the product P one or one is fifty is nothing but the fifty dollars and thirty dollars and twenty dollars. So that is how the employee payroll gets reflected in the corporate finance. So oh, it makes okay. sense in my your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier uh, you were uh, talking about the infrastructure elements like a table and chair and all. Yeah, yeah. so let me just get back to those details again uh, in what way the infrastructure costs of a corporate are managed hmm. so uh, coming back to the infrastructure costs again so i'll tell you two two new terminologies which i've been talking about but in detail i'll tell you so for suppose Uh, i am an employee to a company and uh, my cost is directly proportional to the product like uh, i'll tell you a very simple scenario you have a small scale company which has a product p and i am your employee you are the ceo of the company and how how the infrastructure cost is and you have 10 like probably five employees and i am one among them what is an infrastructure cost and what is another cost i am going to tell you in a, in a minute and in a detail so you have a product p and you are generating a revenue of somewhere around 500 dollars per month and you are paying uh, for this all five employees you are paying probably 50 dollars which is equivalent to 250 rupees 250 dollars and the revenue is generated from this 250 dollars is 500 dollars but this is whatever the salary you are paying to the employee is called as direct expense so directly you are paying to the employee so simple analogy you are directly paying to them that's why it is called as a direct expense so the amount of expense spent on on the employees is 250 dollars the revenue generated for the product is 500 dollars but still you have an other cost like this infrastructure like you are providing a laptop to the employees all the five employees So you have to make that as also an expenditure, right? That is nothing but this infrastructure cost. This is this infrastructure cost comes under like if you if you provide them a like right now it's virtual, so uh, facilities is no way we are not talking. But in the in the real world, actually, you you have to provide them a desk to sit down. So that comes under the infrastructure cost, and plus the the amount the laptop you are giving them. that is again comes into the infrastructure cost or you are providing a cab to the person every day that comes under infrastructure cost you have to make sure the 250 plus the amount of infrastructure cost should be less than the 500 it's like you are spending money you have to generate the money the generation is always should be greater than you are spending if not the case then you are going down you are drowning so you have to find a solution to come up so that's where the infrastructure cost and uh, coming back how that is managed 
that is managed by the head count like the number of people number of employees are in your company by the number of employees so for suppose now the infrastructure cost is 50 so for some for example i tell you 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 have a five, as in the previous example you have five people but uh, each individual uh, for suppose one of the individual is highly high configuration laptop is chosen for him because of probably he's working on a different uh, high level graphics are used or something like that and the rest of the four employees are used by the very low a normal economy laptop but you can't just uh, distribute your cost for the uh, highly uh, higher you can't distribute that it is it is pretty tough because considering five employees it's easy to calculate but considering a 10000 or 20000 or 1 lakh or 2 lakh employees it's pretty difficult to track what do they do is simple calculation for rounding off they they consider the whole infrastructure cost by the number of employees so that is how the cost is distributed across the employees that is how infrastructure cost is being managed in the corporate okay okay so more or less it's like a way to avoid all the discrepancies wherein yeah. you were saying in the example so yeah exactly so this is this is how i have learned but there could be another so these are called as allocation models that's a, that's a different topic altogether it's in the uh, like ca people use it but i am not much familiar on it but yeah this is a simpler way to avoid so so it won't make big like but suppose uh, uh, considering the each individual and trying to evaluate how much the laptop cost is spent on the person or uh, the cab cost spent on that person so if you consider in calculation it it would be much more complicated and at the end of the day you might get to a uh, a difference of probably 2000 to 3000 which is which is like a very a nominal number when you see a million millions of billions of the company profitability or any like this true true that's correct uh, so uh, so far uh, we have been talking about the uh, uh, spendings or uh, the revenue how it it has been actually distributed among the infrastructure costs to the employees payroll and everything and now coming to the uh, actual concept that is the uh, profits so how are the profits calculated in a corporate environment i think this this profit is something which every company crave about correct so simple 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 math again here uh, you although from i think you are also from the same background engineering background the people start learning a lot of calculus a lot of differentiation limits everything but when it comes to a corporate business calculating the profit is nothing but a plus or minus so i has mentioned in the previous uh, conversation there are two different expenses something called direct expense you pay directly and the indirect expense is nothing but this infrastructure cost and there is nothing but the revenue simply for profit is calculated revenue minus the direct expense minus the indirect expense so revenue minus the overall expense is nothing but the profit that an organization or a corporate has been made on that specific product oh wow that's that's very seems to be very simple but yeah maybe managing at the corporate level might uh, be a little complex seems to be simple but people always go crazy to get the profit up that's why yes. people scratch their brain so hard to get it up yeah all right so now that we are talking about the profits tell me what are the ways in which these profits are effectively utilized in a corporate environment in a corporate environment again the profits are calculated and uh, the way uh, coming back to one more uh, terminology i would like to add it here is the operation margin so operation margin is nothing but the amount of revenue generated uh, whatever the uh, all the expenses all together you subtract with respect to the revenue like uh, something like i has mentioned indirect this direct and this uh, revenue minus all these factors by the revenue like uh, did i make sense it's just nothing but revenue minus the overall expense by revenue that's nothing but the operation margin every person wants to effectively improve this operation margin that is what the overall uh, any person uh, any person is concentrated any corporate is always focused on that operation margin what this operation margin or like which is indirectly 
proportional to the profits what does this help when you see this profits that's where the state stakeholders or the shareholders comes into the line right like when when i when i see i want to buy something i want to buy a company share or i wanted to invest somewhere i just look down to the operation margin when i see that okay this operation margin is high that indicates this guy is spending less and generating a revenue more so he is generating something big there so probably he is spending less how is he spending less probably he might have focused on efficiently staff or he could be reduce his expenses on the infrastructure uh, probably he is he is he made it uh, com- completely like for suppose example i i might add a point here right now all the all the it industries has been used to this work from home scenario if if in that case if they have an office there is a lot of facilities cost over there and this this is not this is a never ending cost facilities cost is something it's never ending you have every day you go to the office you have to sit down so desk is always available irrespective to you are there or not still the company is paying for your desk in do that the small square feet i'm talking about but in the work from home scenario it is not there but if a company provides you something like 30000 per year to arrange your desk probably you buy your own desktop you buy your own table that 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 creates a crazy thing but in additional when you look back and see from the profitability point of view you see a very uh, very low cost from the infrastructure that improves your operation margin or the profits once you see a hike in your profit that's where the investors look down there that's where people start okay why can't we invest in this company because there is a high revenue is generating if you support them the revenue could be spiked up that's where the profits are effectively seen how the company is utilized utilizing their profits it's an individual decision like okay? they can acquire the comp- they can acquire a co- kind of a uh, up- upcoming company or a budding firm or a startup or they might invest in their own respective uh, uh, buying up some other uh, like developing some other product or they can put it in the research and development like coming back to they could be a, they could form a team on ml they could form a team on different different perspectives on the research point of view so it's again a management call to be taken but how the profits are effectively utilized is this way how that is effectively used is the other way which i was talking about the stakeholders and the shareholders coming into line like bringing your company up wow superb so it means in short it's like a kind of growing the business further exactly yeah okay so uh, now that we have discussed about profits uh, let's uh, get into the uh, uh, quite opposite scenario that is the losses so how do the companies deal with the losses in the corporate business so uh, when it comes to loss again uh, i am very young to talk about this terminologist but what i have i have learned from past two years was kind of a, a, a scenario like there are three different ways could it can be it can be handled like i am not telling these are like uh, these are the only ways but these are the scenarios that i have observed one thing is when you see a loss they look down and look at it where exactly the loss is getting created. is it so much of indirect expenses being uh, added to the uh, that particular team like consider p as a product again you have a 5% team and you are not able to generate any profit on that part which is nothing but loss so so are we are the five people that we have chosen is a right like are they the right pair all together or should we need to switch switch the team or something like or there could be is there could be a lot of thought process running behind whether these uh, are these expertise or something like that sometimes second second point would be you are spending a lot of indirect expense like although you are this these people are trying to generate a good profits and you have got a very good uh, peer or you have got a very good uh, employees there but still you are spending overly spending on the indirect cost uh, for example uh, you you have got a very good uh, very good employee from us but uh, once in a week you are ha- once in a month you are asking him to travel from us to india again you, you are switching you are sending back to india to us for the small product like it's happening every month so that is nothing but you are spending spending to generate a profit from you, bringing some person from us you are spending so much on that person 
that you can do something you can you can shift the whole team there or if it is operation cost is increasing that you can ask him to come down here or you can you should find a better expert here that could be one of the scenario second scenario is sometimes if they see a continuous loss in other specific product or anything what do they do is they merge into another uh, product like a free license uh, like if you buy one you are getting the other one it's like a, a supermarket discount sale that indicates you what you do is you merge the whole team into a single unit and you make him work all together that shows the company that specific product is something it's always provided but in case if you keep providing to a customer at a point of time probably you keep you start you see a, a customer is been using this particular set of flow continuously then probably you bring him bring the team again again you set a team again this could be one of the scenario third scenario is sometimes when you invest something on the research you see losses so you have to be patiently and you have to find the result sometimes it, there could be a failure that comes up but when you invest something on the research and development in corporate you have to be patient and look at the result or you have to wait for the result those are the scenarios and yeah final final thing when when you see a very huge losses then you have to look back and evaluate in the starting stage you can't just be okay it's it's going well it will go well you should you should always look back and check your uh, uh, statements or your uh, financials once in every quarter where something is going wrong then you have to immediately fix this it's like a if you if you keep calm okay it it's going to be working out for future but then then again you're drowning you can it's it's like a well once you get down you can't come up wow uh kudos to your understanding ashashwi uh, it was quite impressive the best part of, of everything that we discussed so far were the examples that you were providing every now and then may it can be the newspaper for a month or even the mobiles or even the one that you said just now like Uh, with respect to the losses and all the supermarket discounts or anything as such so uh, i was i mean i would like to just appreciate you for your understanding and also helping us and also our listeners uh, and in sharing you by sharing your knowledge to every one of us thank you so much thanks you i think uh, it's it's been a very short journey for me but it is being being at home i started learning little bit Uh, oh that's that's amazing uh, so ashashwi before we wind up this concept i would just want you to give one message for our listeners with respect to this understanding corporate finance uh it's uh, one message i i could say only one thing is it's a beautiful thing uh, you i mean i am still in the learning stage but when you start learning you get to know how much a company behind what is happening like uh, like you you come down you work on something from the like especially when it comes to a technical people coming down you work on something but then you look back and check and how are uh, individual persons contributions happening i can i can add one i can tell you one simple message here is for suppose me being working on on a specific tool uh working on specific tools specific feature of probably jiras and you're working on some couple of five to six jiras all together and you're submitting your work and it's done how much your work is impacted in the financial side tell you in a simple simple line you have worked on a tool and you have completed your jiras per month everything is done your salary is credited when you go look back on the jira point or when you look at the house or the corporate finance point of view this product is generated some 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 probably 100 dollars of revenue because of this feature what you have developed and they have spent some probably 50 dollars on you for that specific month so when you when you jot it down so there is a 100 you have contributed 100 dollars to the company because of your feature and the same amount like 50 dollars is spent on you and that's where 
that's where your impact is created that's where you are contributing to the company so these kind of insights i understood when i when i look back in the corporate finance like every individual we feel from from our perspective that we are we are working like you are giving a support it could be a support it could be a uh, you might be a developer you might be a devops you might be an internal just an internal tool developer or anything comes into the point every individual is always some or other way is is actually making some change a point 1% or something in the revenue that's where the whole whole scenario in the corporate fact like i worked in the technical in the same when you work in the same company from as a developer and again look back on the financials i i work on a specific tool i always used to I, every every quarter we used to get some sheet where you need to fill up what you are working on i used to i used to feel why do we who will ball who is who is which person is bothering what i'm working on why 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 do we fill the sheets but when i when i sat in other chair then i understood this percentage is something which will reflect how much my salary is been split that is contributing for generating that revenue so that's that's where the equations work so every individual we are sitting in the chair and working it could be a support it could be any role that you are doing that is all together it is it is creating an impact on your company if it is not then you are not sitting there or there is no one will allow you to sit there that's one thing which i wanted to which i have understood a lot from the corporate finance wow uh, good to know that you were able to understand the perspective of, uh, i mean uh, you were able to understand from all perspectives all perspectives uh, may not be just from the developer but even from the financier yeah all right uh, so ashashwi now it's time for us to move on uh, for a small yet sweet rapid fire round are you ready yes give the real time best <laughs> okay so uh, it's just for fun so far we had some sort of serious discussion so it's just to uh, have some uh, have some fun segment that's the only thing here yeah okay. sure, sure. yeah so your first question in the rapid fire round investment in government schemes or corporate shares uh corporate shares but if you are going long term then i would suggest corporate shares uh corporate payroll or customer payroll corporate payroll okay uh party with profits or investment with profits always investment with profits okay uh, low payroll on, on time or high payroll with delay uh, i would say low payroll on time on time payroll is always you are safe yes that's true uh, okay profits per month or profits per quarter profits per quarter because profits per month it's an exaggerated term again you go crazy when you see a very high hike in the profit profits per month and you you start working on the next uh, 11 months <laughs> so probably profits per quarter that's how we are measured but it's always good to be going that way okay the uh, payroll on last week or first week always everyone says first week but i prefer it's last week so that you can manage everything in the first week exactly <laughs> okay low increment with rewards or high increment without rewards uh i would say low increment with rewards i don't know if my manager hears that he would be happy but i would say rewards is always an encouragement that provides yes, yes that's true i agree on that okay elss or mutual funds mutual funds okay Uh, old tax regime or new tax regime i would go with old tax regime investing you have to have a plan proper plan with your deductions are done and everything so that would help you out which well i hope they are not going to remove the old tax regime <laughs> <laughs> all right so ashashwi my final question in the rapid fire round uh, which is my favorite out of all the one all the ones that i put to you towards before you so giridhar or ashashwi ha giridhar <laughs> i am not talented can't... like you for to do a podcast so 
uh, come on we have already seen your talent in this episode uh, at uh-huh. least i don't know so many term, terms as well as so much of knowledge about this corporate finance at least as i mentioned in the in our one of the conversation it's a simple math i can say so yeah so it's everyone everyone can understand it's a very very simple math but yeah the beauty is how oh, a large firm is handling that way the tricky thing here comes up okay okay but uh, thank you so much for choosing giridhar <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> all right so thank you so much for being with us on this episode ashashwi we look forward to having you once again in this podcast in the future sure sure there is but not this time in a serious topic for sure uh-huh. on the corporate finance or something people go crazy saying that where did you get this nerd all together but i'm not a person <laughs> okay so you would like to go with any other interesting co- uh, topic sure sure let's meet again it's it's quite interesting doing with the podcast with you and listen to the podcast always definitely thank you thank you so much once again yeah yeah any time any time we will be always here to support you and learn from you <laughs> thank you thanks a lot so that's it for today listeners hope you enjoyed listening to this episode don't forget to like comment share and subscribe see you